And this one's take a look at determining whether the following sum is divergent or convergent. So it goes from n equals 1 to positive infinity sine of n pi over 2 divided by n factorial. So first we need to just write out a few terms. So when n has the value 1, I would have sine over 1 pi, I'm sorry, sine of 1 pi over 2 divided by 1 factorial, then plus sine of 2 pi over 2 over 2 factorial, plus sine of 3 pi over 2 over 3 factorial, plus sine 4 pi over 2 4 factorial, <laughs> plus sine 5 pi over 2 over 5 factorial, and then dot 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 to continue the pattern. Let's simplify some of these. So first of all, sine of pi over 2 is just 1, so that's my new top. 1 over 1 factorial, in other words. Now this is going to be here, 2 pi over 2, the 2 in blue and the 2 in black will cancel off. You're going to have sine of pi over 2 factorial. Next is going to be sine of 3 pi over 3, uh, sine of 3 pi over 2 over 3 factorial. Well, sine of 3 pi over 2, that's going to give you negative 1 over 3 factorial, bottom of the unit circle, 270 degrees if you like. Next is going to be 4 pi over 2, so the 4 pi divided by 2 will give you the 2 pi, so it becomes sine of 2 pi over 4 factorial. Next one, plus sine of 5 pi over 2, yes, sine of 5 pi over 2 over 5 factorial. Sine of 5 pi over 2 is just positive 1, so it becomes plus 1 over 5 factorial, plus dot 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 to indicate that you would continue that pattern pretty much. Let's simplify some of these, so for the first one you have 1 over 1 factorial, that's so just 1. Now sine of pi is 0, so you're going to have 0 over 2 pi. I'm, del I'm sorry, over 2 factorial. I am deliberately not actually finding the factorial values. Next, negative 1 over 3 factorial, that's going to stay as, I'm sorry, yes, negative 1 over 3 factorial. Now the sine of 2 pi over 4 factorial would be sine, basically would be 0 over 4 factorial. And then 1 over 5 factorial would look like positive 1 over 5 factorial. Now make an observation here, which is that, you see, the numbers look like this. Like this term right here would go away because it has 0 in the numerator. This term goes away because it has a 0 in the numerator. So what would be left over would be 1 minus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial. So in other words, look back here above my head. That's a 1, correct? That's a 3 in that position, you see? That's a 5 in that position. So each of those bottoms is an odd number. We also have to observe now that the signs change. So this is positive 1, this is negative 1, this is positive 1, and so on. So for that reason, I'm going to convert things as follows into summation notation. I'm going to begin at n equals 0, go through positive infinity here. I'm going to stick negative 1 to the n. -n. So I need to have that because remember, when n has the value 0, this would be, let's see, this would be negative 1 to the 0, which is 1. And then here I would have 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. So when n is 0, this would be 2 times 0, which is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So I would have 1 over 1 factorial, which confirms that it would be generating this first term. Okay? So it's got to begin at 0, go up to positive infinity. You need the negative 1 to the n to change the sign on terms. And this expression is 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial because 2n plus 1 is the general way of writing an odd number like, for example, over here, 1 or 3 and 5, since those are the terms that remain. And the 1s, for example, like the 1 with the 4 in the bottom and the 2 in the bottom, those would be 0 over 2 factorial, 0 over 4 factorial, clearly those would go away. That's why you need only a 2n plus 1. So now, because I do have a series and the signs change, uh, I'm going to think about this in the context of alternating series. So what is my b sub n here? b sub n is basically then 1 over 2n plus 1 quantity factorial, basically. So now to see whether this original series here converges, I need to do a test that involves two steps. So first I'm going to check this. Is b uh, sub n plus 1 less than or equal to b sub n? So let's actually work this out and check it. So what is b sub n plus 1? That's the column on the left here, okay? So that means you go over here and you replace every occurrence of n with n plus 1 and simplify. So I'm going to have 1 over 2 times n plus 1 plus 1. <laughs> Distribute that 2 over to the n and the 1, so it's going to give you 1 over 2n plus 2 plus 1, factorial the whole time. Lastly, add up, so it's going to give you 1 over 2n plus 3, factorial. And now on the right side, that's the b sub n column, so what I'm asking is the whole time, right? I'm saying is the left side less than or equal to the right side. That's why I have a less than with the question mark present. So it becomes 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial the entire time straight down to here. So now the question is, is this true right here? The answer is yes. That's why I also have a check mark here. Because you see, the bottom here is 2n plus 3. This is 2n plus 1. So when a fraction has a bigger bottom than another fraction like this one here, then... What that tells you is that the fraction is smaller. In other words, the left-hand side here is smaller than the right-hand side. So for example, like imagine n has the value 5. So you're going to plug n equals 5 in. 
So this would be 2n plus 3, that would be, in other words, 2 times 5, which is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13. So it'd be 1 13th. And over here, I would have 1 over 2 times 5, which is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11. So it'd be 1 11. And you can see, you can check on the calculator, 1 13th is clearly less than 1 11. So this part is checked to make sure that b sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to b sub n. Next part, I want to check whether the b sub n actually converges or not. So I have the limit as n approaches positive infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. That is equal to 0. That's a small reason for that. Basically pretend that n is infinite. Okay, so you'd have 1 over 2 times infinity plus 1 in factorial. That's basically still infinity. So 1 over infinity is 0, you see? So that tells us that this here basically converges to 0. So the two pieces taken together, the one on the left-hand side and the one on the right-hand side, tell me that this original series here, n equals 1 to positive infinity right here, converges. That's what it's telling me as a result. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video. It's the time of the coronavirus. Stay strong. I live in Queens. We are one of the hardest hit areas. Just stay strong. Focus. Be rational. And stay safe.